Do I have to adopt like an Arab culture? I'm proud to be a black man. Do I have to put my blackness to the side? This is so quite often asked, and usually it's asked by people who are right wing and Christian white. Are you trying to Arabize me? You often find reverts dressing like an, and behaving like and eating like the Muslims that happen to help them to come into Islam. The sunnah of the Prophet is that you clothe as your people clothe, as long as the clothing doesn't go against the rulings of Islam. It's like a lizard. It lives in the desert and it becomes very big and they eat this. And the Prophet, when he saw these people eating it. Do I have to adopt like an Arab culture? Do I have to wear the soap? Do I have to like drink tea? I know it might seem like a silly question, but to me, right, I'm proud to be a black man. Do I have to put my blackness to the side? I'm going to get Dr. Imran actually to start with this particular question. I love the way that the doctor does the surgery. And since it is Dava Clinic and the doctor has arrived, mashallah. Doctor, let's get the surgery on the way, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum brother Paul, lovely to have you here. You know, it's interesting because this is so quite often asked and usually it's asked by people who are usually right wing and Christian white people and you ask this question, you know, are you trying to Arabize me or, you know, are you, is this what you're trying to do? Islam is not based upon an ethnicity. Allah is not calling a specific ethnicity to Islam or you're not required to become Arab in any way whatsoever. All you're required to do is uh, what you're already doing, you know, alhamdulillah, is that uh, accept that only Allah is worthy of worship and that the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon is the father or messenger and follow the guidance that comes with that and then whatever within your culture is within the sharia so for example if it's in the in, in the culture that you drink alcohol then you would not drink the alcohol because that's not part of what islam teaches you that this is not allowed so you wouldn't do that so as long as the things within your culture don't conflict with any rulings within islam there's no other issue at all you can dress it the way you would normally dress as long as the rulings in terms of the clothing be loose and to you know cover a certain part of the body etc are fulfilled some people they they do make the mistake of trying to follow the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him but in their minds what they think this is is to, to start dressing like the Muslims that they know around them and who claim to be doing the same thing so you often find reverts of people who become Muslim that they will start dressing like and, and behaving like and eating like the Muslims that happen to help them to come into Islam so uh, you know people start wearing Salah Kameez if the people who help them to become Muslim uh, were Pakistani or you know if they if some Arab brothers helped you they start to wear these robes and, but this is something not required by the religion You're this is something that we bring ourselves. So definitely, no, you don't have to become an Arab at all. Allah says in the Quran that he created all of mankind from a single soul and he divided us into nations and tribes. And you know this already. I know I'm preaching uh, to you to a certain extent. Then Allah gives a reason that they're per perfect. The, the verse has just come up. So Allah gives a reason why this was hap this happened. And it says, oh, oh mankind, indeed we created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. And that's really the key. So our differences that we have in our culture and our ethnicity, etc. This is from the blessings of Allah and the idea is we come to know each other and we learn about each other. It's like uh, you know, the spice of life. Imagine you had a salad just full of cucumbers. It would just be a boring salad whereas if it, the, the variety of humanity is that all the different colours and the flavours of the world are there and we are all Muslims and the, the, the next part of the verse is really uh, important. It says, indeed the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you, ones who have the most taqwa. And so the only way we are differentiated is nothing to do with our looks, nothing to do with the way we dress, nothing to do with the languages we're speaking but actually how close we are to Allah uh, how, how much uh, taqwa we have of Allah so the answer for you is that you're not required to become Arab or Pakistani or Indonesian or Malaysian no you're required to become Muslim and take the parts of your culture that are good and you, you would keep them and the things that are in conflict with Islam and the Sharia, you would avoid them. So Islam is a diverse, beautiful religion for mankind, not for any specific group of people. When the scholars like talk about the clothing of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he used to clothe like his people clothed. Okay, so the the principle that the scholars take from this, this that is Sunnah, like the Sunnah of the Prophet, is that you clothe as your people clothe, as long as the clothing doesn't go against uh, the rulings of Islam. And there is even a principle in Fiqh, what is called libas al shuhra uh, that you have certain clothing where you stand out like from the older people and this is warned against that the scholars speak against this you should not wear something that is totally not from that culture so when you walk down the street everyone looks at you so somewhere maybe like that's even with the kamis like this it goes even so far that uh, i i saw like certain fatwas speaking about the turban so they were like okay is it just because the prophet used to wear the tur turban is it now sunnah to wear the turban sallallahu alaihi wasallam and a lot of scholars said no it's not sunnah to wear actually the turban except if you do it for loving the prophet and you want to 
be more similar to the prophet like just just like some some of the companions used to even place their foot where the prophet placed his foot because they loved him so much you will be rewarded for that love but the clothing in itself it is not like it hasn't like an islamic meaning okay so headwear we know headwear for example is sunnah the prophet used to cover his head most of the time but there is not one specific headwear you have to do that with it's not obligatory but it's like it's it's good but even if you look at the muslims around the world they don't have one headwear one of them have turbans one of them have these heads one of them have like all that the, the moroccans have this red head that's a bit uh, bigger so yeah and even subhanallah the prophet sallallahu himself he sometimes like he encountered things from other cultures that he didn't like for himself but he didn't prohibit it so for example i have this incident of uh, the dub this it's a kind of animal it's like a lizard it lives in the desert and it becomes very big in the Ar arabian desert and they eat this and the prophet when he saw these people eating it he allowed it but he said how can you eat this because it was not from his culture he couldn't eat it but he didn't prohibit them following their culture by eating this lizard so everyone can hold this culture as long like it's in the islamic framework then alhamdulillah there's nothing wrong with that brother paul how was that in terms of an answer for you it was great i appreciate it thank you